Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. That you could see it all made new. We do. Ooh. Is all creation grown new? It is. Is a new creation coming? Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? It is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Of all blessing and honor and glory, is he worthy of this? Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom and peace to God to reign with the sons. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessings and honor and glory? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy of this? He is. Is he worthy? Is he worthy?
Let's pray together. Jesus, as we come before you this morning, our hearts are open to you. Lord, we were thrilled Wednesday evening as we were able to be a part of the kids' camp. And we saw an openness in boys and girls. And even though we knew they were tired, they were, wor- they were worn out, some were homesick, some were just in a, in a, in a daze. But we watched as their time of worship, they focused on you. The place was full of energy. As the message were, was presented, we watched boys and girls with their attention toward the front. And we knew, Lord, beyond a doubt that your spirit was speaking to their heart. At the close of the service, those boys and girls were given an opportunity to bow at the front and pray. And Lord, we knew beyond a doubt that you were hearing and answering prayers. You've given us the opportunity this morning to come into your presence. Your spirit is here. You're speaking to hearts. Would you help us, Lord, to just revert back to the time when we were children? And that you would give us excitement about being in your presence. And Lord, for the next few moments, would you let us focus our attention on you? Help us to shut out all of the other stuff going on around us and look to you. And Lord, would you help us to be like those boys and girls and just say, Lord, here I am. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. We heard those boys and girls singing at the close of that service. I have decided to follow Jesus. Today, Lord, help us to make that decision and help it to come from the bottom of our heart, not just from our lips. Lord, today we believe there's a work that you need to do in all of us. Some need to be, as we used to call it, saved. Some need to be forgiven of sins. Some need to be sanctified wholly. Some need to be reminded of the responsibilities that are ours when we dare call ourselves a child of God. And as you move in our midst today, would you speak through this holy word, Lord, that you've anointed for this day and this time. In Jesus' name, amen. For the past two Sunday mornings, we have looked at the topic of freedom. And I know that is something that resonates with each and every one of us because I don't know anyone here today that would say, I I don't appreciate living in freedom. I I want to be held captive. I, I want to be held in bondage to the things of the world. We saw in scriptures over these past two weeks where the Lord's Word offers us a way to be free from fear. Aren't you thankful for that? And freedom from guilt. Now, I know that second one sounded a little strange when we dug into the scriptures last week, but after the service, I think I came to the conclusion, again, the Lord knew what he was doing, as he always does. As he takes words that are stumbled over and he makes them resonate in our heart and in our mind and and draws us into a deeper walk with him. This morning we're going to stay on this topic of freedom, but we're going to look at it in a little different way. Today we're going to see a topic that is just as difficult to overcome as fear and guilt, but yet one of the biggest differences is we don't always recognize it for what it really is. This morning the topic of our focus is going to be 
entanglements. Those things in life that trip us up. Those things that distract us. Those things that take us captive and hold us hostage. It can be any particular sin. It can be an attitude. It can be a habit. It can be an addiction, a mindset. It can even be a relationship. Anything that takes us captive and holds us hostage that hinders our walk with God and thus ultimately controls our life. Last week we were in the book of Hebrews. And I was so thankful that the writer there showed us the ways that we could be set free from the bondage of guilt. And so today, I want us to see what he has to say about being free from the entanglements of life. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, very familiar passage of Scripture. Listen to what the writer says. He says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses... Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Now, in this passage of Scripture, you've heard it said many times that life is likened to a race. We automatically begin to envision a, a marathon. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know if any of you have ever ran a marathon. I think I could do it. It might take me a month or so to complete from start to finish. But a marathon is something that requires what the scriptures talk about here, that patience, that persistence, that perseverance. We know that deep down inside, we've got to desire to keep running for all we're worth. But you know, if you are a marathon runner, you know that there's an awful lot involved. There's more to it than just simply running. You know that along the way, there are going to be things that are going to try to trip you up. There are going to be things that are going to cause a distraction, things that are going to get you all twisted. And so you begin to say, well, what can we do about these things? If this is likening what we're doing here in life to this kind of marathon, how do we avoid these things? Or if we can't avoid them, how do we keep them from taking over our life? Well, this morning, I want to share three thoughts with you. These are things that I think we need to consider from Scripture along with common sense that I believe can help us be free from all of the things in our life that try to take over. Let's start by, first of all, identifying our current attitude toward freedom. Identifying our current attitude toward freedom. And some of you are already thinking, oh, Pastor, what does attitude have to do with this? I'll tell you, it has an awful lot to do with it. Because the things that we see, how we perceive, are going to often dictate how we live, how we think, how we act, how we treat other people. Now, in the volatile climate of our society today, our attitude and our mindset can either be a great asset or it can be a liability. It can help us and help others, or it can be a stumbling block to us and to those around us. Now, what comes to mind, before we move any farther, when I say the phrase spiritual freedom, what do you think about? Do you think about that time that your sins were forgiven and you were saved? Do you think about the fact that God's Word teaches us that there's going to be a lot of stumbling blocks along the way? There's going to be a lot of temptation. There's going to be times when you, I don't care who you are, how old you are, how long you've been in church, whether this is your first time or your 5,000th time, you are going to be tempted. And those temptations, if you're not careful, will trip you up and pull you into sin, pull you away from the Lord. So what comes to mind when you hear spiritual freedom? Do you think about that freedom from fear and freedom from guilt that we've seen? Do you think about breaking all of the bonds that sin puts on us? All of these things are well. All of these things are good. 
But you know, when we talk about our freedoms in Christ, we often neglect to think about the responsibilities that go along with those things. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor? Well, when we begin to walk in the freedoms of the Lord, we need to stop occasionally and ask ourselves, am I really and truly living the way God is directing? Is my life being inspired by the Word, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and in turn, is my life being an inspiration to those around me? Do you know if we misunderstand what the Bible talks about when it refers to the spiritual freedoms we have, then we can really and truly do more damage than we do good. You say, well, what are you talking about? If we look at our spiritual freedoms as, well, I can do and say whatever I please. I can treat others any way I want because they'll know I'm a Christian and they'll just excuse it. They'll say, oh, that's just him or that's just her. That's just the way they do. You know, it's horrible to be identified like that, isn't it? But we know people who say, well, praise God, I'm a Christian and I'm living this way and you're not. And that's going to be another topic in just a moment. But it does more harm than good. And so you're, you're thinking, well, well, what do we do? How do we live? Well, you know, the Apostle Paul was one that dealt with attitudes and actions and spiritual freedom. He dealt with what it means to be a Christian. And, well, he scolded us occasionally when we get out of line with what God's Word is encouraging us to do. For instance, and, and you don't have these scriptures up on the screen, but in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning verse 29, Paul talks about... Um, our talk, our speech, the things we say to others. Listen to what he says. He says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Did you get that? Our spiritual freedom enables us to say things that encourage, to say things that lift up to say things that draw others to Jesus. Does it mean we keep our mouth shut when we see injustice, when we see sinfulness, when we see immorality? No, that's not what it's saying. But it's telling us when we are communicating with those around us in our spiritual freedoms, we need to lift up. We need to encourage how do we live in front of others and how do we treat others? Well, Paul writes to the Philippians in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. He tells us, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in all humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. That's our spiritual freedom. That's what we should do. That's how we should live. Those are the things that we should say. And you say, well, how does this deal with becoming tangled up in things? Well, it's pretty, uh, pretty evident because a harmful mindset tangles us up in our own selfishness. We do things to benefit ourselves instead of others. We do things to make the point that we want heard instead of doing and saying what the Lord is going to use to draw others to Him. Our attitude and our mindset of spiritual freedom should propel us to live holy, speak lovingly, and impact those around us for Jesus. Are we okay? I hope so, because it gets tougher. I'm serious, folks. This is one of those passages of Scripture that when you read it the first time, you just kind of sit there and shake your head and say, yeah, right on, writer. The second time you read it, it's like the Lord is saying, are you listening? The third time, it's like he's saying, huh, doesn't that sound a little familiar? And by the fourth time you read through it, you're usually down on your face, on the carpet, begging God to help you, to forgive you for not seeing what his scriptures were saying. 
Well, here's the second thing that we need to see and understand. We should avoid the things that threaten our freedoms. Okay, we've already determined this is what we think of when we say spiritual freedom. This is how we believe God desires us to live as forgiven individuals, as saved, sanctified individuals attempting, doing their best to live righteous and holy lives. Now, we hope that it describes all of us, don't we? Okay, what do we do next? We need to be aware of those things that threaten our freedoms in the Lord. If we comprised a list of of dangers, things that threaten our walk with Jesus, that list could probably become a little overwhelming, especially when you stop and consider those things that come to mind. Well, let's look at three of these things that are specific dangers. The first one is one that is everywhere we turn. And you're going to say, how could that become an entanglement? How could that be a stumbling block? Are you ready for it? See if you agree. The first one is distractions. You think about it. Do you have distractions in your life? If you don't, please write a book. I would love to read it. I'll stand in line to purchase the first copy. But I'm talking about those things that take our attention away from true essentials. Have you ever noticed how trivial things can monopolize our life? And we say, Lord, we want to serve you with all of our heart and we want to focus on you and we want your Holy Spirit to lead, guide and direct us and we want to be an instrument that draws others to you. But let me, let me go over here and pout and go through these things and hold on to all of these trivial things for a while. You know, there's sometimes, sometimes at the end of the day and I look back over things that we've been through I often wonder, Lord, how many people died and went out into eternity lost while we were dealing with the non-essentials? Do you ever feel that way? I mean, does that ever bother you to think about things like that and wonder what could we have done? Is there someone that we could have poured our energy and our time into? Well, distractions are just the first thing. Those things that cause us to focus on the non-eternal. Another one is misconceptions. And you know what one of the greatest misconceptions is around church people? My sins aren't as bad as your sins. Huh? Yeah. You know, hey, you do this, 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 and this. Boy, they break every commandment you can find in here. My sins aren't that bad. Oh, yeah, I gossip a little, but I do it as a prayer request. I make it spiritual. You know the Bible says that's sin. It's not listed over with the other ten, but it's it's sin according to God's word. You know, we can't be this way. That's a lie of the devil. And and it basically just convinces us that, hey, we're good. We don't need anything. We don't need the Lord. We're good. We can, hey, we're going to make it. Well, here's the third thing. This one's going to sound, let me see. I don't want to say this one right before lunchtime. Parasites. You know what a parasite is? Ever been on a mission trip? Ever brought one of those little puppies home with you? Parasites. And you're saying, Pastor, what are you talking about? Do you know that is in this passage of Scripture that we just used? When the writer of Hebrews was talking about the sins that so easily entangle, some translations call them, well, besetting sins. Do you know what that really means? And I know this sounds gross, but the writer is describing sins that entangle habits, addictions, persistent things. Other translations of the Bible, listen to how how they describe it. Sins that cling to you. Sins that refuse to let you go. Sins that ensnare you, that trip you up. Here's one from one of the paraphrases of the Bible. Sins that like little dogs nip at your feet. And you say, oh, come on. Do you have... Sins in your life 
that over and over and over again, you take them to the Lord. And you say, Lord, forgive me. I, I know I promised a hundred times, a thousand times, I'd never do that again. And here I am, I'm, I'm back. Now, when we think about those ensnaring parasites, we think of addictions, don't we? We think, oh, those poor people that are addicted to drugs and alcohol and all of these other things. I know why our mind does that. But do you remember those sins that we think are greater than ours? Did you know our attitudes, our, our mindsets, those things can become the parasites that suck the spiritual life out of us, that take us captive and hold us in bondage. I'm talking about repeated actions, repeated attitudes and mindset. It's those things that we do so often that they become habits. They become automatic. They become our default settings. You know what I'm talking about? Did one pop in your mind? Did several come to mind? These things are so draining that like parasites, they suck the life out of us. They keep us weak. They keep us defeated. They rob us of our spiritual freedom. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, here's the third thought that I want you to consider, and it's this. We must capitalize on the freedoms that we have. We must capitalize on the spiritual freedoms that God's Word is teaching us are ours because Christ died on the cross to provide them for us. Now, I want you to think of this. I call these actions that set us free. These are things that are our part in this. We know God can do anything, right? We know that God is willing to forgive us of our sins, to fill us with His Spirit, to give us strength to overcome. We're learning that in this study. But we've also learned there are times that we have a part to play in this. We have things that we need to do. And so when we look at these, these freedoms that we have, as we look at that passage of Scripture, what I did was I went through and I picked out some action verbs, you know, those that describe what our actions are or should be. There are three of them that are pointed out by the writer here that describe what we should do. The first one is to throw. You know, we know how to throw. Little kids learn how to throw from, from a very young age. We all have learned how to do it. Some better than others, but yet we know what it's talking about. The writer says that we should throw everything off that hinders us. In other words, get rid of the entanglements. Remove them from our lives. If it's relationships, make the changes. If it's actions, seek forgiveness, seek strength. If it's attitudes, Seek to be filled with His Holy Spirit so that He can work through those things. Throw away the entanglements. The second is to fix. Now when you talk about the word fix, we usually automatically think of repairing something, right? Huh? You know, you're fixing this or fixing that, or if you're from the South like I am, it means you're about to do something. You know, I'm fixing to do this. But the writer here is talking about Fix is in put your gaze on Jesus. Don't let the distractions around you hinder you. Put your eyes on Jesus. Distractions will call your attention away. You just had an illustration of that, right? <laughs> in our life, we need to look to Jesus. If we get our eyes off of the Lord, we're going to lose our place in the race. We're going to be wandering off somewhere else, wondering where everybody else has been. We must fix our eyes on Jesus. And the last thing that the writer says is consider. Consider what? Consider what Jesus has done for you. 
consider the sacrifice he made so that you don't have to be held captive by all of the entanglements of this world. Consider, take into account your life and your spiritual needs. Now, folks, let me tell you, if we fail to give our attention to these things, we're going to continue to be held in bondage. And when I talked about entanglements in the beginning, some of you were thinking about, well, this sin, that sin, all of this and this and this. Do you see the danger? Do you see how many, many things can get us all twisted up to the point that we have a default setting and every time that temptation comes, we revert right back to it. What do we do? We give our heart and life to Jesus. We open up in openness and humility before Him. In honesty, we just share with Him what's going on in our life. He knows it already, but there's just something about us confessing to Him. And if we will do this and stop taking our spiritual freedoms for granted, Jesus will set us free. I just knew you'd stand and cheer on that one. Jesus said in the book of John, and when we shared this passage last week, as he's talking to those who would listen, he said, If the Son sets you free, what? You will be free indeed. Are you tired? Are you weary of life and what it's doing to you? Fix your eyes on Jesus. Let him set you free. And then, let's live in his freedom together. We're not going to be perfect. We're still going to mess up. We're still going to struggle. We're still going to hit those difficult times. But you know what? We'll have each other to help us. We can be an encouragement. We can surround each other as the picture paints the saints surrounding those that are running the race of life. Can we do that? I want to say a word of prayer for us. And as we do, I, I, I want you, again, to picture those, those things in your mind, those things that create the struggles in your heart. Would you consider giving them to the Lord this morning? Whether you're here, whether you're watching this online, or would you consider just saying, Lord, I'm, I'm tired of the struggle. I'm tired. I, I don't know where to turn except to you, would you set me free? Lord Jesus, as we open our heart to you, would you let your Holy Spirit remind us of the powerful words from your holy word? Will you speak to our heart and reveal these things to us that we need to see? Lord, as I said earlier, this... This struggle isn't quite as cut and dried as that fear and, and guilt. This is, wow, more vast. Would you help us, Lord, to be set free, to overcome and be victorious in all things through you. We love you, Jesus. We ask these in your name. Amen.
that once burned bright and clear replace the lamp of my first love that burns with holy fear oh lord you're beautiful your face is all i need and when your eyes are on this child your grace above